this thing working? Is it recording? Yes, it's recording. I can see the light. Look at it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Back up, back up, back up. Hi, I'm Skip, and this is my roommate, Vinny. Hi, uh... And right now, what we're going to do for our first debut on the internet is review all these movies you see on this shelf behind us. And there's some that are down there, too. Yep, all of them. Every single one. In alphabetical order. That, too. Alphabetical? Well, they're on the shelf alphabetically. You want to go through and break it down by genre? Only nerds do that. I'm not seeing the problem. Shut up! Let's get on with it. Accepted. Never went to college. Would have liked to go to this one, though. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. A perfect cult classic in the classic pulp tradition. It's just a shame enough people didn't see it to get that sequel that it promised. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Good cartoon. Not a great movie, though. The Adventures of Tintin. With Harrison Ford getting older, odds are this is the best Indiana Jones film we're gonna get that doesn't suck. Airplane. What are you, nuts? It's a fucking classic. Go watch it. Alita, Battle Angel. Based on a classic manga and anime, this one takes it to a whole new level with amazing visual effects. It's weird, but it's worth your time. Altered States. Just fucking weird. Atop the fourth wall, Back Issues Collection. All right, so this one's basically just a bunch of public domain reviews and such like, but there's some good stuff on this disc. Atop the fourth wall, the movie. Yeah, it's a lore movie from a nerd on the internet, but as far as lore movies from nerds on the internet go, pretty good. The Back to the Future trilogy. Classics. This should be in everybody's home video rotation. You should own it on physical media. Back to School. Rodney Dangerfield was a fucking genius, and if you ain't seen this movie, why not? Bad Times at the El Royale. If you like Quentin Tarantino movies, but don't really care for all the feet, this is a really good choice. The first four Batman movies. Okay, not great. Weird, but kind of fun. And just plain silly. Batman Begins. It should have just been called Batman Year One, but it's actually pretty good. And Cillian Murphy's great as the Scarecrow. The Dark Knight. Revolutionary when it came out, but today, eh, it's all right. Did you realize it's been 12 years since that fucking movie came out? Batman the Movie, 1966. What do you want? It's Adam West and Burt Ward for crying out loud and all the great villains from the TV show. This movie's great. Batman, Return of the Cape Crusaders. It's a great animated movie homaging the 66 Batman series much better than Batman and Robin did. Batman vs. Two-Face. The follow-up to Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders sees them taking on Two-Face for the first time in the Batman 66 universe. Shatner's really good as Two-Face, it's just a shame he's become everybody's whiny-ass, senile grandpa. Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, the original uncut edition. The only way to watch this movie. Batman The Dark Knight Returns. A good adaptation, but really, do we need to tread this ground again? <sighs> Batman Under the Red Hood. An interesting adaptation of a classic comic story, but mmm, it's alright. Not great. Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You would think this would be a disaster. Instead, it actually provides to be one of the most fun crossovers ever, and in fact, makes you like Damian Wayne. Go figure. Batman, hush. A not so great adaptation of a classic comic story. I mean, whose idea was it to make the Batman Catwoman romance the forefront of the thing? I thought it was great. You have no taste. Bedazzled. A remake of a Dudley Moore Peter Cook comedy from the 70s, this version features Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley, and really, it's not that bad, and there's some really funny stuff happening in here. Big Hero 6. A little too cutesy for my taste, but for what it's worth, eh, it's alright. Big Trouble in Little China. The closest thing we're gonna get to a sequel to The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey. Excellent Adventure remains a classic. Bogus Journey's kinda weird, but it's okay. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Girl power forever? This movie rocks! If you didn't like it because you wanted to get involved in the culture war, you're wrong! The Black Hole. I don't understand a single thing that goes on at the end of this movie, and I don't think the filmmakers did either. Black Dynamite. A stunning satire of the black exploitation movement in film, and frankly, one of the funniest movies you'll ever see. Blazing Saddles. Another comedy classic which you should be severely shamed for if you haven't fucking seen it yet. 
Brazil. Terry Gilliam's problematic thoughts aside, Brazil remains one of the most poignant satires of modern living which becomes more and more prescient with each passing day. The Breakfast Club. Dated, but there's still some good stuff in here. And some, admittedly, not so good stuff. Brewster's Millions. One of the few clean comedies starring Richard Pryor, it shows that he does have comedic chops even when he doesn't have to swear. Brick. Applying noir tropes to a high school setting works surprisingly well, and in fact, makes it a really more interesting film than it really should be. Bubba Hotep. From Phantasm director Don Coscarelli, this is a very strange but very fun movie starring Bruce Campbell as an elderly Elvis and Ozzie Davis as a man who may or may not be JFK, fighting a mummy who wears a cowboy hat in an old folks home. No, I'm not going to elaborate. You need to see this for yourself. Cat's Eye. An anthology of Stephen King's short films. It's alright. Quit is incorporated is kind of fucking cool. Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. These movies are not great. They have not aged well, but there's some fun stuff in here and there. Christine. A classic fucking horror film. And the weirdest thing is, is that today, except for the swearing, it would actually probably be PG-13. Great starter for anyone trying to get into horror. Class of 1984. An oddly prophetic Canadian production with surprising violence and interesting gore effects and, you know, the usual problem of having majority of your main cast actually be in the 20s. Cloak and Dagger. A surprisingly dark so-called family movie from the early 80s. This one features a Hitchcockian plot and a little exploration of what happens when your imaginary friend sticks around for too long. Clue. Another comedy classic. Never mind the fact that none of the endings actually work. Coming Distractions. A compilation of trailers from Troma and along with a few other things. Not much to say about this one, but it's worth a watch if you want to get an idea of what Troma's all about. Condor Man. Honestly, I know they don't need to anymore because they got Marvel and whatnot, but honestly, I'd like to see Disney take another crack at this one and maybe get, lose all the spy stuff that goes with it. Critters 1 through 4. First one and second one are good. Third one's okay. Fourth one, meh. Death on the Nile. One of the seminal whodunits of our time. What, you think just because I dress like this and talk like this, I don't appreciate a classic? Detective Pikachu. You wouldn't think that a mystery plot would work that well in the Pokemon universe, but this one, this movie went above and beyond what it had to to make money. And it's well worth your time. The Devil and Max Devlin. Bill Cosby can go fuck himself, but he's actually really well cast in this one. Dick Tracy. Warren Beatty needs to give up the rights so we can get another movie. This one was great and I want a sequel, damn it! Die Hard with a Vengeance. Look, we all love the original, but for my money, the third one's actually pretty solid. The Dirty Harry series. These movies are kind of like an interesting look at how action films changed over the years. The first one is a very much a 70s, grimy, dark exploration of whether the cure is worse than the disease when it comes to crime. The last one is a goofy-ass 80s action movie starring Jim Carrey before he was anybody. The Dukes of Hazard. If you can find it, get the theatrical cut. The unrated one just throws in more boobs and weed jokes and it doesn't add nothing. Easy A. If you like John Hughes but aren't too sure about all the problematic elements, go with this movie. It fixes them and makes the whole teen genre better. Eight-Legged Freaks. If you want a good old-fashioned driving style monster B-movie, you can't go wrong with this. Giant Spiders and David Arquette. Go with it. It's fun. The first four Ernest films. Ernest Goes to Camp is good. Ernest Saves Christmas is great. Ernest Goes to Jail is weird, but a lot, a lot of fun. And Ernest Scared Stupid is a little maligned, but it's really the weakest of the four. Escape from New York. Another fucking John Carpenter classic. Kurt Russell sheds the reputation he had working for Disney back in the late 60s and early 70s and becomes the tough, badass guy we all know and love today. Long live Snake fucking Pliskin. Escape from LA. A lesser sequel to Escape from New York. It has some interesting ideas, but don't really coalesce into a whole thing. Evil Under the Sun. Okay, so it's not as good as Death on the Nile, but Peter Ustinov's still charming as hell in it, and it's got Roddy McDowell. Who doesn't like Roddy McDowell? You do like Roddy McDowell, right? And that's A through E. Next time, we're gonna do... What are we doing next time? Oh, for crying out loud. Let's see. Uh, F through L. We're doing F through L next time. F through L next time. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Skip. And I'm Vinny. How do we end this? 
Well, just go and turn it off. I mean, you're going to edit this out, right? Yeah, I'm going to edit it out. It'll be fine. All right. Good. No way. Look out for the camera. All right. Whoa.